Well, it's December 9th, 2023. <clears throat> and a couple things that I've seen this week were like, holy crap. So it's about to be a wild ride. So buckle up and sit back and try to make sense of everything that I'm going to tell you, especially in regards to some of the things that um that are coming out after we touch on things. This is just the provinces within uh Ghost Recon Wildlands plus uh the Division Two Manhunt because I'm not waiting five plus weeks in between each manhunt for Division Two. I'm gonna wait until it's and until they're all available. To go knock out at once, and then once I do that, I'm gonna go and do all of the man hunts from the past seasons at once as well. Because I figure, you know, why not? More content, more stuff for me to do. I level up my guy, and you know everything else. So, <clears throat> and it's just you know one of the things that I I I can do because I enjoy playing the game. Speaking of games, <clears throat> um, game awards. Touch on some of the, we'll touch on a couple of those and um my thoughts on <clears throat> excuse me on uh certain things. Let me go ahead and get this aim awards winners. Because I, I, I wanna I wanna get this a hundred percent correct. I don't want anybody like I don't wanna misconstrue anything. I'm going to start all the way at the bottom and go up. And then go from there. Because it's one of those things where I want to be correct in the sense that I'm actually mentioning these these uh, companies. And I don't want... <clears throat> excuse me. I don't want anything to be, you know, taken out of context. So we'll be diving on that. And then I got my thoughts towards a congresswoman who represents my state and her little snide comments and remarks towards uh, two southern states, Texas and, um, and Florida. On top of, we have uh, Dan Clancy's statement considering the Korean creators for Twitch. Um... People's reactions on Grand Theft Auto 6. My thoughts on the trailer. Games that I'm looking to dive into. As well as a couple, you know, some other things within that. Plus, something else that I've seen on Facebook. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into the Game Awards from, you know, this past week. So, best esports event was 2023 League of Legends World Championship. Best esports coach was Christine Potter Chi, Evil Geniuses for the Valorant Squad. Best esports team, JD Gaming for League of Legends. Best esports athlete, Lee Faker San Hyuk, excuse me if I mispronounce his name, for League of Legends. Best esports game, Valorant from Riot Games. Content Creator of the Year. I know none of these, but, you know, congratulations to Iron Mouse. <clears throat> Most Anticipated Game, Final Fantasy VII or Rebirth from Square Enix. Congratulations to them, and I know several people who enjoy the franchise, much like how I enjoy the uh, Ghost Recon franchise. People who have been playing Final Fantasy since its inception can, you know, kind of rejoice on, on some of this stuff. Player's voice was uh, Baldur's Gate 3 from Larian Studios. Best multiplayer presented by Discord was Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 3. Best sports slash racing game was Forza Moser turn by Turn 10 Studios and Xbox Game Studios. <clears throat> Best sim slash strategy game, Pikmin 4, which is uh, on Nintendo uh, from Nintendo e EPD in Nintendo. Best Family Game, Super Mario Brothers, Wonder from Nintendo, EPD in, by Nintendo. Best Fighting Game, we kind of figured this one was um, Street Fighter VI Capcom. Best RPG, Baldur's Gate 3 from Larian Studios. 
Best action slash adventure game. Love the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom by Nintendo EPD and Nintendo. Best action game. And I tell you straightforward, I was so glad that they were in this category and that they won it because I enjoyed the hell out of the game. Story was on point. Uh, the, like everything about Armored Core 6 for it being the mecha action that we all remember. Phenomenal. I, I, I can't argue against it. But they were up against, you know, a couple of other heavy hitters. But congratulations to Armored Core 6 as far as Rubicon from from uh from software and Bandai Namco. Best VR AR game, Resident Evil Village from the VR mode from Capcom. Best mobile game, Honkai Star Rail from Hall Uverse. Best debut indie game, and I've seen the artwork. I have not played it. This isn't my my type of style, but congratulations to Cocoon from Geometric Interactive and Anna Perna Interactive. Best independent game, Sea of Stars from Sabotage Studios. Or Studios, excuse me. Best community support, and this is where I had an issue with one of the nominees. <clears throat> now, Bungie laid off quite a lot of people for Destiny. And how that managed to squeak into this category, and they have not listened to us one bit, it's no wonder why they didn't why they didn't win. But congratulations to Baldur's Gate 3 from Larian Studios. Best ongoing game, Cyberpunk 2077. And yes, CD Projekt Red did a damn good job of seeing... Everything that um everything that you know went wrong with their game and how they were able to improve on it. I haven't dove back into it. I might do so because I did eventually stop playing because it gave me fucking headaches. So Games for Impact, Chia, Innovation and Accessibility, Forza Motorsport, yep. Uh, best performance, Neil Newborn from Baldur's Gate 3. I'm not a turn-based guy, but I've seen gameplay of everything. Best audio design was uh, Hi-Fi Rush from Tango Gameworks and Bethesda Softworks. Best score music, Final Fantasy, I believe, 16. The composer was, um, excuse me, excuse me uh, Meso Yoshi Soken from Square Enix. Best Art Direction, Alan Wake 2. And Best Narrative for Alan Wake 2 from Remedy Entertainment and Epic Games Publishing. Best Adaptation, The Last of Us from PlayStation Productions, HBO. You have Best Game Direction, Alan Wake 2. Game of the Year. And this was a packed category. You had a contest between Alan Wake, Alders Gate, and The Legend of Zelda. I am so pleased that Baldur's Gate 3 won Game of the Year. And again, I'm not a turn-based guy, but in the uh, in the long run of things, I'm very pleased that a lot of people have played it. A lot of people are um, are happy with the outcome of things. So, yeah. Now we dive into this person. Congress women, Jameen Crockett. Apparently they didn't pay attention to what happened when Hillary Clinton called people deplorable. It's ama it amazes me, you know, what goes through people's minds when they're reading things. And I fail to understand why people are allowed to say this. Don't take my word for it, though. Ms. Perry, I know your organization, the Heritage Foundation, loves Texas. Ooh, they love Texas. They always sending us some nonsense bills um, that somehow set this country on the wrong trajectory. They send them to Texas. They send them to Florida. Every deplorable state that we can think about, they usually coming out of y'all's think tank. In fact, Ms. Perry, I know you. Ms. Crockett. If you're representing a state that you're calling deplorable, 
and you have an issue with that state or an article of you know of anything in some context of that do everybody a favor and get the fuck out of politics cuz you have no business in there Matter of fact, why don't you just go work at a uh, deplorable job where a lot of people, you know, barely make it? Why don't you go, you know, work in the fast food chain so you can understand why people are tired of the bullshit that we see and that we're dealt with and tired of all the other crap? Because at the end of the day, it's one of those things to where you calling the great state of Texas. The same state up in the Dallas Fort Worth area that you represent. Deplorable. All right. Well, <clears throat> I find your stance very deplorable. And I'm allowed to say that. You being a public official and in the public eye. Saying something that's egregious, I would argue, calls for your resignation immediately. Hmm. But will, well, you know, will, will somebody like uh, like her face any repercussions or anything for that? No, I guarantee you, it's not because she's black. It's because she's a Democrat. Rules for thee, but not for me. If you don't blame me, go back to Benghazi whenever they uh, the whole Benghazi incident and the uh, Clinton Clinton crap. Whenever they found, sir, you know, a private server being used for government purposes, which is highly illegal. Rules for thee, but not for me. Just, just keep that in mind. It, baff it baffles me how people like this can get away with saying stuff like that with no accountability. I'm telling, like. It it would turn into a fucking shit show. Somebody like me had to go testify to a bitch like that because of my stance. I don't take no shit from anybody. I'll be the first to tell you. You can sit there and bang your little gavel all day long. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Mute my mic. I'm louder than all you motherfuckers up on the goddamn podium anyways. Go ahead. I have a right to voice my opinion and my disconcern and my own concerns on how this government and this body is. And I'll be honest, you know, I see things going on and I see other areas kind of being the way that it's being. But on the same token, hang on. On the same token, it's like you you see the um the, the shit that's going on. You want to say something, but you're afraid of the recourse. Well, as long as you're not threatening somebody's life, or you're not violating any uh, you know type of rules or any of that other crap, you're good, right? Wrong. Cause this whole woke. Bullshit PC cancel culture mentality will come straight for you. You better have the fucking guts to, fi to fight for it. To fight for your own goddamn notion. Fight for your own stance on things. Because if you don't, you're gone. Now, I'm not going to pull up the, um, the, the roasting of what happened from the um, Republican debate. But I will say this. Look up Vivek Ramaswamy. He is in a category of his own. He's the youngest amongst all the others running. And he's the most brazen and bold one. Like the most bold one that I've seen thus far. If it comes down to him and Trump between the two prime, uh, the two nominations, I'm voting for uh, for Ramaswamy. Because he's in my generation's age. On top of that, he doesn't have the bullshit corruption and everything else from the DC swamp 
on top of all the other crap and baggage and all the other stuff that Trump has. And I'm not sitting here touting Trump all the day long, blah, 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 blah. He's dealing with his own shit. If he doesn't, you know, do what's needed of him, he's probably not going to be able to do the day of light outside of a jail, but outside of a jail cell for Trump. Anyways, on Vivek Ramaswamy, he's called out the three big letter, three letter agencies. That would be the IRS, the FBI, and CIA. And normally I wouldn't say their name, but he called out the CEO of BlackRock. All right. And he's like, we need much less government in our lives. And it's a hundred percent correct. Why we have this much governmental oversight on our very lives is beyond me. On top of that, how is one company able to own the able to own and basically operate in the scope of the capacity as they operate them as well as start investing into other areas that they have no business invest in like investing in um like over in ukraine and the russia thing and i wouldn't be remiss that they're already invest you know investing in the palestine and israel conflict on top of funding some bullshit more so in the Middle East. Like we go down this fucking repeat cycle that doesn't end. And I know I got the camera small because there's still more shit that I want to I want to cover. And one is uh kind of heavy. So yeah. But it, it baffles me how an outsider who's challenging the DC status quo is ridiculed the most. When you got career politicians who don't give a fuck about everybody else. They only care how much more money they can make. That's basically the end goal now. You're in politics. Fuck everybody else. I'm lining my own pockets. Don't believe me? Inside trader is a big fucking thing. Let's dive into the subjects of back to gaming. And people's fucking freak out on Grand Theft Auto 6. Mr. Jackson Hinkle, and if you even dare sw fucking swing by my area and shoot me a DM or even comment, I'm telling you straight forward, you have your head so far up your fucking ass, you don't know what an M4 mature rating stands for, let alone what the ESRB system is meant to do. You are saying, why is this for children? Motherfucker, it's an M rated game. It's meant for 18 plus mature audiences and it is nowhere intended for 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 kids whatsoever but parents are stupid and they buy it for the kids anyways ask me if i if i'll ever let my kids play this while they're in this house that's a big fat fuck no and if i catch it if i catch it installed on their phones their tablets their laptops or their Xbox in my fucking house. I am factory resetting that device. I do not want my kids playing this in my house. Now, if they're over at a friend's house and they're exposed to it and everything else, I have no control over what they do. Okay? All I can tell them is, hey, be aware of how you know how violent and how graphic this game is. That's all I can do as a parent. I'll tell them you are not allowed to play inside this house. But I can't control everything that they do. I can't. As a parent, I'm only allowed to control, you know, what I feel is necessary in the scope that I see it. But I bring this up. Because he says a couple things. Why are the Zion, uh, the Zionists at Rockstar Games releasing the sexualized video game for children in America? Get hashtag ban GTA training right now. No, the only thing that's going to happen is people who see this shit and everything else is going to call you a fucking moron. Because, oh. 
It's clearly aimed at adults. It's for adults. Are you tripping? GTA has never been for, for children, ever. I'm sorry, but this one is L. I disagree. The game is for adults only. Oh, shit. Look at here. Make content content inappropriate for children. Visit ESRB.org for rate information. And you can scroll through and take a look at everything else within here. On top of that, there was another lady who freaked the fuck out on on things and I'm like lady you're missing the mark if you want to take a look at what I uh, what I had responded to go to my Twitter look in the replies look in the replies section it's I mean dude there we go Oh, by the way, this is adults only. And if you're curious on how this looks, that's that rating for ESRB. And that was San Andreas. Another one. Like, credit to uh, to the people who, you know, enjoy this game. I get no enjoyment out of, you know, what I, I wouldn't... Like, I played it back whenever I was a... Uh, when I was a kid at a friend's house, I was like, I don't care for too much for this. I didn't find enjoyment in it. <clears throat> it was meh. And this is back on the PlayStation, mind you, where you had the bird's eye, like the top down view. It's nowhere near what it is now. I can tell you now, like the way that it has evolved, kudos for them and everything else, but. I won't play it if people want to sit there and do the RP server for it and everything else. It's one of those to where it's like, not for me. But it, it's one of those things that it's, um, it, it's not going to be in my house. When they're 18, they can do what as they please. I can only get I can only give it the advice that I see. But when they're under 18 and they're still in my house, no. Does that make me a controlling parent? No, it doesn't. It's saying, I don't agree with this being played in my house. Or, you know, right there. Now, when you're 18, play it. I don't fucking care. But you're still a kid, and my house, my rules. <laughs> Simple. Got an issue with it? Tough. You raise kids, then. I guarantee you have the same notion. Now, if you're curious on what this says and everything else, I use Yandex for translation. And I was very, very disheartened to see this. However, I understand where they're coming from. From a business and operational standpoint, I understand where they're coming from. I took the entirety of this and I post and I, I pasted it on into here on Yandex. Quote. Update for Korean uh, for Korean Twitch. Today I have very a very regrettable news. After years of struggling and finding and trying to find a way to continue operating in Korea, Twitch decided to terminate business operations in Korea as of February twenty seventh, two thousand twenty four Korean time. <clears throat> in the meantime, we deeply understand that this decision is very disappointing for Korean streamers who have spent a lot of time and effort and building a community on Twitch and rely on Twitch for their livelihoods. I would like to give you a detailed explanation of why this decision was made in details about when it will end and how we will support those who will be affected by this. Currently, the cost of operating Twitch 
and Korea is at a serious level. We have spent a lot of time trying to find ways to continue operations in Korea through cost savings. First, we introduced a P2P model <coughs> for source quality and tested it. Then we adjust the maximum image quality to 720p. This effort has reduced costs somewhat, but due to network fees in Korea, which are 10 times higher than in most other countries, it is no longer possible to operate. As a result, Twitch continued its operation in Korea with significant losses, but no longer, but could no longer find a way to continue its operations. <coughs> Excuse me. Twitch operations in Korea will end on February 27th, 2024, after which Korean viewers will no longer be able to purchase Twitch's paid products and streamers will not be able to monetize Twitch. More information can be found in the help post. In addition, an email has been sent to all Korean streamers and viewers who will be affected by this decision. We recognize how important it is for streamers and the community to find a new home like Africa TV or YouTube. Therefore, in order to ensure that community migration is smooth, we want to help streamers leverage on-site message with the Twitch service and post links to other services. In addition, we will discuss the companies. Uh, we will we will discuss with the companies whether they can help us transfer the community to other services, and we'll let you know if there is any progress in this regard. Finally, I tell you again that this decision was a very difficult and a difficult decision and that all of the Twitch staff are very sorry. Korea has always been a dazzling presence in the global esports community and will continue to be. We are infinitely grateful for your efforts in building a Twitch community in the meantime. Twitch will stay in close communication with you for the remaining weeks until February 27th. And on December 6th at 9.30 a.m. to which uh, to which KR live, basically they went live explaining. I will have time to talk to the community in person. More information can be found in the help post. Dan Clancy, CEO, Twitch. What this basically means is those that are over in Korea are getting mixered. But not like how we got mixered. There's been a breakup on uh, on Twitter. We got fantastic news. We're shutting our doors, but moving you all to Facebook. The difference between how Twitch approached this versus how Mixer approached it vastly different. Or vastly different. First, Twitch gave a straightforward fucking nation. Second. They're giving options like Africa TV or YouTube, and they're basically saying, "Hey, we want it. we're wanting y'all to use your leverage to move all of your community over to another site so you can stay monetized and stay making that livelihood and stuff like that." So they're doing the right steps. And third, they gave a reason why. And yes, operation costs in Korea are extremely high. Having gone through um, a couple business courses and business ethics, I understand how the Asian culture and different countries within the Asian culture operate. Korea has their own method, especially when it comes down to their economy and how it's broken through their lineage but whenever you see the the constant rise in technology rise in technology equates a higher cost higher cost equates a higher operations cost higher operation costs equate to trying to push out a better product and if you can't match that better product that higher operation cost is just going to continue to go and go and go and go and go whether or not they try to hit that mark multiple times beyond me i'm not a business guru but i get where twitch is coming from on this um that's very very disheartening to see especially with twitch and 
um, over in Korea because I know how hard the, that esports world works their ass off to ensure that they bring forth a quality product in real time. Like, yeah, you can have, we'll use, um, <clears throat> Um, well, you know, what? We'll, we'll use a hefty delay, all right? I'm going to use, we'll go back, we'll go way, way back from Justin TV to the transition to Twitch. That delay was at least a minute at best. And then over time, they started producing better quality. Well, we, we told them this isn't considered live. This is considered recorded. Because you have over a minute delay. Couple that with how DLive's um, integration was whenever that delay was 15 to 30 seconds. Ain't no way anybody can be, you know, interactive with their community and stuff like that. So I get why Twitch decided to close the door. I'm glad they gave, you know, the breakdown as to why it did. Does this mean that Twitch will, you know, eventually cease operations? No, it does not. They're still going forward. What this means is that they're eventually going to be saving millions. Because their operation costs in Korea was probably bringing down the uh, the profitable margin for the entire company. And then I was like, you got to figure this out. They ain't going to, you know, this thing go off of that. <laughs> oh shit excuse me all right we will touch on this here in a second but path of exile 2 <laughs> and foxel not nah, screw that we're gonna touch on um we're gonna touch on this now. <clears throat> so the day before, most people were like, "Oh, is this even a game?" Yeah, it, it turns out it actually is. <clears throat> See what this says: sixteen thousand five hundred twenty-two reviews. Nineteen percent are are positive. So that means you have 3,139 reviews that are positive. And I mean, holy shit, product refunded, 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 refunded. These guys are going to have to seriously apologize. All right, we're going to go from here. Refunded, refunded. Like. Refunded, refunded. And yeah, they're all going to say early access because it's an early access game. Refunded. Refunded, refunded, refunded. I wouldn't be surprised if more than half of the purchases or refunded. Just. <clears throat> it, 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 it's bad. And I have high, and people had high hopes for the game. People had very, very high hopes. <clears throat> because basically it's like Tarkov, but with zombies. They completely missed the mark on this. 
They had no quality test. They had no technical test. They had no alpha or beta test. And they just like, all right, we're just going to release early access. We're going to have the players test our product. I'm going to tell y'all now. And I hope, you know, there's a couple of developers that are watching this. All right, come, come, come in closer. I, 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 I want you to listen to what I have to say. Okay, are are you listening? All right, gamers are not your product testers. Those who buy the game are not your product testers. You can have gamers as your product testers, but have a sign up for them. We are not your quality checks. We are not your, you know, we are not your quality assurance. We are not your benchmark testers. We are gamers. Same thing with streamers. We are not your fucking testers. Goes for every fucking game out there. We are not your fucking benchmark for your game. That's what your QC and your QA checks are for. That's what tech testing's for. That's what alpha testing is for. That's what beta testing is for. That is what feedback for all of those are for. Not when the fucking product is released. Because this game has the potential to be good. It might not anymore because here it is 48 hours later. And when you have less than a fifth Fucking fifth of the reviews and possibly people who played it. That it's a good game, give it time. That's an issue. Yes, I get it's early access. There's a difference between early access and a flop. A flop would be this. Early access, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. When it fucking launched. And I defended that game until, you know, the raid came out. And I was pissed. Because you could not swap off of the gear score. You couldn't. And I was pissed. Still completed it. But I was not happy that I couldn't swap off the gear score because it locked certain things. Gamers and streamers are not your benchmark test. Your alpha and beta testers are with feedback on everything. Now, I mentioned Silica last time. I still need to play more of that before I give my points on it. But... Within their Discord, they're actively updating things. I mean actively. And their dev team is taking the feedback with a grain of salt, some of it good, some of it bad, and they're implementing the changes that need to happen. Balancing is coming out. So whether or not the day before can essentially bounce back from this We'll just have to see. Now, I mentioned Foxhole on um, on a, f a few of them. But you can see uh, 30,549 and 82%. 82% are positive. 
We're just gonna do this. I'm gonna go here. You can see, it's not the best graphics. It's not, you know, cutting edge in a game that's, what, only a year old? I've seen some streams, and I've seen the engagement that people have. And yes, I will be getting this after I get paid for January. And I'm going to have it every fucking Thursday and Friday. We're going to play Foxhole. And I'm going to see who else wants it. And I'm going to see who, who else wants it on, like, within my Discord and also another person's Discord. And we're going to try to do a combined effort. And we're going to go from there. I'm telling you, I, I like the way this game looks. And I've seen streams and I'm like, that's pretty cool. It's a, it's a, a constant war and until it ends and it, it's, you know, constantly going. Now, this one... We just gonna let this play out our right, good. The gods caused all this, you know. I want y'all to count how many classes. After Aureus was destroyed, I traveled, searching for answers. Everywhere I went, the same divine devastation. It must end. I will end it. And no exile will stop me! a hundred distinctive environments, 600 monsters, a hundred bosses, 1500 passive skills. I cannot wait to see what the theory crafting of this looks like. 36 Ascendancy Classes. 240 Active Skills. You know what? I'm going to move this over here. Sheesh! Yeah. This world will be yeah. reborn, no matter the cost. Oh, um, before anybody asks, uh, this will be free. Because Grinding Gears um, did the first one. It was free. And it's going to be the same as the uh, the second one. So. 
I'm very intrigued on how things are going to go with that. I'm intrigued on how things are going to look at and everything else. Um, but no, uh, like it's interesting to see the uh, the direction of where gaming is going, um, and all the other stuff. And I'm genuinely pleased with how things look, especially for the foreseeable future. Because with the games that are scheduled to come out and the things that are essentially on the horizon, I can honestly say that this has been one of the more intriguing years that I've seen. But we'll just have to see how things come about. We'll have to see how things play out as well. But uh, other than that, I think we'll uh, I think we'll be you know good to go. So until then, I will catch y'all next time, and let's see what other random shit comes up the next week. But. No, it's it, it's an interesting ride to say the least. So I'm pleased with things. But yeah, just having fun with gaming and streaming in general is just the overall goal. And I have some things that I'm gonna do starting next year that will be helping those who want to get started, as well as some other things. So till then, I'll catch y'all on the next one. That'll be cool.